so about that. Warning, this video will involve very graphic material, material, blood and gore, and also a few things that might seem squeamish to the audience. So, viewer description is advised in this. I'll try to basically keep a lot of the gory scenes kind of out from this review, but I make no promises. I also don't know how YouTube is going to react with this review or anything, but this is... Just to let people know, in case they didn't see the title of the video and just clicked on it, this is a review of the newest Evil Dead Rise movie. So if you're expecting, oh boy, happy fun times and everything, uh, that's not exactly what this video is. So just to be forewarned with people that clicked on this video in case they're thinking that this will be a kind of wonderful fun time review, not really. Um, this is just gonna be my review of Evil Dead Rise, so for people that don't like horror movies, for people that are squeamish, tune out of the video right now. If you're not into that, I completely understand. If you just wanna leave it up like you're listening to a podcast and you're just listening to it, then by all means necessary, you are able to do so. But there will be a bunch of gore and blood and violence in this film, as well as possible... And I say possible... And I say possible... But there is something that kind of is talking about the fate of an unborn child in this. Whether that means abortion or not, I don't know. So, if anybody's not keen on that, you can tune out of the video here. I said if. Because I will be kind of talking about that and making my own theory about what the demon meant by this point. But, with that all said and done, please enjoy the video anyways. Just... Watch at your own discretion. Children under 13 should not be watching this video. Uh, but just viewer description advised anyways. And for anybody that is basically really easy stomach and watching this, uh, yeah, you shouldn't be watching this video. So you can tune out right now. But for all of you here just to enjoy this this video, then please enjoy. You have, basically, this is your last chance to tune out of the video for most people. But here we go. Green Geeks and Nerds, I'm Lazy Universe and White and Nerdy, and it's another, and a time for another Lazy Universe movie review for all of you. And today you're coming into the Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, and Robert Tappert film, Evil Dead Rise, uh, directed by Lee, directed by Lee Crown. This is the newest Evil Dead movie that has been released, I think, this year. Um, I'm trying to look for, yes, it's been released, not this year, last year. So, so, <clears throat> this is just going to be my own personal thoughts and opinions on the Evil Dead Rise movie. So, for those of you that haven't seen it, there might be some mild spoilers ahead into this. And in case for people thinking that, hey, you should save this for Lazy Wing. <laughs> my channel, my decisions. But thank you for the standing up evidence anyways. But no, this movie has excited me so much that I actually wanted to talk about it. Early, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to talk about the newest Evil Dead Rise film. And no, I haven't seen the original Evil Dead or the remake. So, the only film that I've seen was Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. And also Ash vs. Evil Dead, which I have reviewed on this channel. <coughs> you can go back and watch that. <coughs> Anyways, this is just going to be my honest opinion and review of the Evil Dead Rise movie. So just to let people know, if you scream at about horror, this movie has a ton of blood and guts and horror going all around, so you might want to tune out of the video here. You have been warned again. The movie technically begins with a prequel that's going to happen later on in the movie, with a young girl named Jessica being possessed by a deadite that will later on happen towards the end of the film. For the most part, the movie has a pretty unique setting. It's set in a hotel, with our main group of characters being a family that lived upon the 13th floor of this hotel aesthetic. Personally, I like this change in the aesthetic. I know a lot of people, when they watch reviews of this movie, not the spoiler one, just reviews of it, were saying that they wish that this movie had taken place in a cabin in the woods, like the original, like the opening did, before cutting to the the setting, but I feel like that it's a pretty unique setting because nothing is creepier than being kind of locked into an un to a um, really creepy setting, and of course that this hotel is pretty creepy in of itself. Uh, according to the son Danny in this film, it's that it's haunted by a ghost, which is I believe that this is actually based off of a true ghost story or myth. 
where that a bank where that a robber got held up inside of a bank and instead of um <clears throat> and instead of just giving himself up to the police, he ended up hanging himself anyways inside of the bank, but he had coins held inside of his pocket, which is a lead to the myth with that if you went into this bank and you tried to steal from the ghost and he heard the jingling of the coins, like he would hunt you down and get you. Which is a pretty nice aesthetic, but it also kind of sets up what happens uh, um, later on in the film. But I do like the change in aesthetics. Again, I haven't seen the original Evil Dead or the remake, which I know it takes place in a cabin in the woods. But I'm just saying, for, for my standpoint, the hotel aesthetic was pretty cool. And also, there was a unique way of trapping all our main characters. Well, for the most part, um, the family in this movie, it was, it was a unique way of being like, the family is trapped in this, in this setting, and guess what? We're not going to let them out. We can't let them out, because they had to be main players according to this horror story, so who are the characters that we're dealing with? For the most part, our main character in this film is Ellie, or Elle, as she's also nicknamed, who is basically our main character and also the first one to get possessed by the dead eye. There's her older daughter, Bridget, who just so happens to be a protect the world, save the whales, you know, deforestation rights, blah blah blah, all that kind of thing, but she's a pretty cool character. Then there's her son, Danny, who just so happens to be a DJ master, and who likes to do all things DJing. I'd make a DJing pun, but I can't think of any. And then there's the youngest, Cassie. Cassie might be a demented little child for stealing her mother's scissors and cutting the heads off dogs, but hey, I'm not a parent, and I don't know anything about parenting in these rights. Already, I like the family that it's in this film. The family feels very sincere. It feels like something that people could, could relate to. It's not a big family, no, but there is one nitpick I do have with this movie, and that is the hero behind this movie. Which I'll talk more in greater detail later, but I would have liked it if it was the kids going up against the demonic mother. I did say the mom did get possessed by dead eye anyways. But I would have liked it if it was the kids versus the mom, because it really feels like that you could have played more heavily on the emotion of the kill of the kids and the weight they have with their mother. And it would have been nice, you know, not really in the abuse setting, but to kind of give weight to the children for trying to decide whether to kill their own mother or let her live in this demonic form. I'm not trying to sound dark or anything, but it would have been a nice kind of twist in a horror movie where it's like kids are basically choosing whether to have their mother be kept living or to sacrifice their mother for the greater good. It would have been a very unique combination to kind of work in this film, but unfortunately the kids are not the heroes in this story. Instead, for most of the children, they are cannon fodder to be possession items. No. Now, our main hero in this story isn't the kids, and it's not Elle. It's instead our sister, Beth. Beth is coming in at a moment to try to help her sister through her struggling needs, because she's behind on rent, a bunch with a bunch of other problems lined up behind her, but her sister is pregnant. And the movie does establish this pretty well within the opening scene of Beth taking a pregnancy test to see if she's actually pregnant, or if she isn't pregnant. However, the setting of the movie does change, and it changes very quickly, when her son Danny gets trapped inside of the bank, and he finds the Necronomicon, but not the Necronomicon at Mortis. If memory serves me right, Danny finds the Necronomicon at Disturbus, which also had some very unique, I think, side effects for the Necronomicon. Which is how, in the, be in the film, Ellie becomes possessed by a deadite, and ends up becoming the demonic source of entertainment for some people for a while. A bunch of models and sex workers dressed up as this woman for whatever reason is their reason, but I'm just saying it was just kind of weird to see her everywhere over the internet. So the film mostly becomes about our main characters trying to hold off against a demonic person while at the same time trying to fight for their own means of survival. It is a unique premise, trying to get the family around what's happening to their own mother as a means of trying to figure out what the hell is happening in their life and how to be stronger because of it. While at the same time, trying to figure out what in the holy hell that they should do about all the demons walking around inside of the property and everything. Ah, 
there probably was that small group of people somewhere out there that was going, Don't include the cheese grater scene! Don't include the cheese grater scene! <sighs> and I did. And it feels good. I made all of your legs hurt. And it was so worth it. Bunch of women right now that have hairy legs aren't even thinking about touching that razor tonight. Uh, I had to include it. I'm sorry. It's a pretty unique film, although unfortunately I was hoping it would be a lot more sinister than what it was. But no. No, it was not. I will admit, though, that the Deadite sequences in this is actually pretty cool. Although uh, it's a little on confusing how the Deadites in this version just happened to change. Then again, I have forgotten from my Ash vs. Evil Dead that they possess whoever that they see fit, so who am I to judge the demonic ones? Although what's unfortunately in this is that while Elle's supposed to be the main villain, and also said poster child of the movie, she's not very prominent in the film throughout this movie. In fact, it actually turns out to be more than just her. It actually has had Beth, no, not Beth, but Bridget, and also Danny going up into this, which leads to my confusion of why Beth is the main hero, but her pregnancy is the main is the main reason behind this. Which I find kind of depressing because I did like Beth in the movie as a character. She seems like the pretty cool aunt character. But I was expecting her to be twisted and turned into a deadite. No offense to any pregnant woman out there. I was just expecting for that dramatic twist and turn. But I do understand that they wanted to give her a reason to live because they went throughout this whole entire film saying that she was pregnant where the whole audience already have already knows this. But they keep making jokes and references with that with the occasional I'll swallow your soul bit. The semen notices that she had two souls. Again, the movie kinda treating us like idiots like did we didn't know that she was pregnant at the beginning of this of this movie. But it does give her something to live for. As Cassie pointed out in a later scene, that she expects her aunt to make a good mother, and which way that she would react, mostly interacting with Cassie, or more than Danny and Bridget, it does make her good father material for the mother. But the movie kind of confuses me in this fact, because when the Deadite and Bridget, well not Bridget, but Beth, are talking to one another, it feels like that Bridget, Beth, there are too many characters with the name with what it would be in their name in this. It feels like that Beth is on the subsiding scale where she's choosing if she's gonna keep the baby or if she's gonna shoot a boy son. And I think that when the demon, I'm not gonna show it for people's standards, but when the demon reaches or trying to reach through her stomach in the later scene, I swear it was trying to they're basically um, be like a metaphor or a symbol for like abortion or something. And I don't know how to really react to that if that's what the film if that was the filmmaker's decision, if they were trying to like hammer something home, or if that was just a metaphor brought on by the demon. I have no real idea behind that. I just thought that I should have mentioned it because the film kind of does hammer it home to me, and I had to sit there and think about it like, huh. Like, good metaphor, movie. Like, very good metaphor that the movie was trying to just be like, T -t 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 -t. I don't mind us, we're just hammering this in to make sure that the audience could, um, do this. But, above all, the characters were all pretty likable and everything. But my favorite Deadite and also just, and her standards, and also design, was pretty much Bridget, even though she only got that small scene, and probably the most memorable scene in the movie, would involve the cheese grater. Everybody was pointing out that the cheese grater was the worst thing to happen, and it really wasn't. I've seen movies with more gross effects than this. But it, but it does make sense that Beth should be the survivor to give herself another chance, because it kind of was hinted at that maybe her and Elgie growing up were abused by their mother. It's never exactly brought out to be 
pinpoint, but it does feel like that is the effect that happened with that it does happen with it. But I'm kind of depressed that yeah, that bus is the main hero behind it because I was expecting the kid to kind of be the main hero. I was hoping that the kids would kind of be up against their own mother trying to create different creative ways across that, but that's not actually what happens in this film at all, especially toward the end. Where Cassie ends up surviving with Aunt, Beth and, with Aunt Bessie, but in order to escape, they have to be unlocked the garage, which unfortunately, they're trapped inside garage. But the demon unfortunately, or gratefully, due to a great effect both practical and CG, changes into a monstrous conformity of all the deadites in this movie, which is pretty cool to admit. I gotta say, the final showdown, though, for me in this movie was not exactly what I expected. It wasn't bad, but it was kind of bland. I expected a little bit more of an over-the-top fight scene. Nevertheless, though, it was a pretty awesome stand fighting that happened between the final demons and, of course, Beth, who had to sacrifice herself for the greater good to save humanity. But it had to do with the metaphor of Elf or Beth facing off against her own fears, against her own family and herself, and deciding to keep the kid and also, I will assume, raising Cassie. Ending off on a pretty... not-so-great death scene, unfortunately. Again, the final battle, or final stand-up, really could have been better. Overall, Evil Dead Rise was a pretty damn good, impressive horror movie. But just with a few minor flaws, you that... We, what was the symbolism behind Beth? Was she going to keep the child, or was she really going to do away with it? Was there any heavy symbolism, or am I just drawing these conclusions out of my own ass? We don't know. Unfortunately, the movie didn't fail to tell us. However, the deadite scenes are pretty damn interesting, and also the blood and gore is there and staring at you straight in the face from basically the halfway point till the end of the movie. But unfortunately, it still is unsatisfying because you don't really get enough Deadite action. That was the first one, and then Beth, then <clears throat> Bridget, and then finally Danny, it, and then also the neighbors. It had no drawing conclusion to go anywhere in these films, but there are a bunch of homages and references not to just to Evil Dead and Army of Darkness, but as well as some other horror movies too, for example, there's a cat in the ventilation shaft. Fans will know what I mean by that reference. But above all, Evil Dead Rides is not exactly the greatest. Like I said, I kind of hoped that this movie would have had the kids going up against their own mother. And that kind of would have been for a darker horror movie, but it would have been for a pretty interesting one in my opinion. So I'm pretty impressed with what, hap with what happened. So, for my Funko Pop rating of, of Evil Dead Rise, I will have to give it my honest rating of an Elder Bloodstone. It is impressive to look at, and it does hold up on its own, and it is a gem in a horror variety. Just some people might find it a gem, and, my, <coughs> and other people might find it like a shotgun blast straight to the face. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tell me what your own opinions are of Evil Dead Rise in the comments down below. And if you agree with my rating or not, let me know in the comments down below as well, too. And also, do you agree with some of my opinions that it should have been the kids versus an evil mother, or do you like the film just all on its, on its total? And also, please do, if you have seen them, uh, don't spoil them for me, but please let me know if I should check out the original Evil Dead and also the remake in the comment section down below, and maybe for some lazy wing, I'll check out both of them. Because I intend to look at Evil Dead 2, this lazy wing is depending on how everything goes. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me at Twitter with the link in the description down below. I've been Lazy Universe. I've been waiting nerdy. And for more Lazy Universe movie reviews, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and click that bell icon to be notified every single time I make an upload. And thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, take care.